Welcome to Transformation Matters. Shift from grumpy to grateful, from heartbroken to happy, from helpless to hopeful, from jealous to joyous, and cluttered to clarity. Using 12 themes from the book Live Inspired, stories of brave self-discovery and the wisdom gleaned along the way, I'll be sharing an idea, a brief story, and tips you can practice to engage a holistic transformation of your heart space, and life. I'm Laura Staley, founder of Cherish Your World and author of Live Inspired. I passionately guide people to heal, transform, and thrive. Today, I want to share about the death of pretending. (laughs) Many of you have likely heard about imposter syndrome, you know, when we're being fake to fit in with other people, and this is not belonging. (laughs) Because we sacrifice ourselves on the altar of public opinion, which shifts and changes by the hour, we'll act like we have it all together when on the inside we're coming unglued or all heck is breaking loose in our lives, but we'll tell everyone we know, I'm fine, and offer a big fake smile. Another way of seeing this is the emergence of being real, genuine, and a living awake to yourself with honesty and integrity, being able to be vulnerable and brave at the same time and show up as yourself, no matter where you are or who you're with. Now, the content of the conversation that you have with another human being may alter, But at the heart, you get to be genuine. You get to be yourself. Pretending is exhausting and really, really unsustainable over time, especially if you're deeply committed to being genuine, to being free, to be yourself, to live aligned with your deepest values and aspirations. We usually pretend to fit in. And yet it can, be, it can have a great cost to our souls and our hearts. And that's where we kind of get cracked open a little bit. <laughs> so here's a brief story, and then I'll share some ideas of what you can do to begin to shed the uh, imposter syndrome and bring an end <laughs> uh, to pretending in your life as much as you possibly can. Uh, so years ago, uh, when, when I was married and had two young children, we woke up to just this God awful odor. I couldn't even describe it. You know how some odors are just, there are no words, (laughs) uh, but it was pretty gagging. Well, my then husband discovered a decomposing possum underneath the deck and uh, was brave enough and fortunately didn't toss his cookies in uh, removing that dead possum. And being the (laughs) kind of being that I am, uh, you know, looking at energy and feng shui and, and all of that, I got really curious, oh gosh, what is the spirit animal energy of the possum? Well, many of you may know that possums pretend to be dead as a way to protect themselves from predators. And I thought, boy, isn't this an interesting metaphor that we got to experience a decomposing possum? And I thought, wow, maybe what a great metaphor for putting an end to pretending, my own pretending at the time. You know, pretending that I was happy when deep down I was heartbroken. You know, pretending that all is fine when life was just really challenging. Uh, You know, and being able to tell the truth about what's actually happening, you know, to another human being is just uh, really pretty incredible. So that's that's my brief story. And now here I would I would like to share some ideas of how you can begin to, well, first of all, notice that you're pretending because maybe some of you don't think you are, (laughs) but maybe you are. Uh, Begin to notice. So the first one, a lot of these are just noticing. So begin to notice the places, people, and experiences that make you extra crabby. (laughs) You know, and this might be a clue that you're in a bad fit situation. Kind of like if you are feeling obligated to a social event, but you'd rather be at home taking a bubble bath and reading a a wonderful book. 
Um, and just just notice what what activities are really aligned with your heart and what is making you resentful, crabby, uh, uncomfortable. And yet you're plastering that smile, you're putting on that nice outfit, but you're just dreading the experience 100%. And begin to take small steps to move in the direction that makes your heart sing. Maybe the next time you get that invitation, you just decline and you take your life energy to the place that makes you feel joyful. Uh, and and then you're refreshed and able to do the, the tasks that are meaningful to you. Begin to listen to your heart, to that still small voice inside of you that wants to be free, joyful, alive, engaged with people or the activities. You know, you have only one life and this moment and, oh gosh, you know, the invitation to spend it in a way that uh, really aligns. A second idea is to begin to notice when you have a fake voice, laugh, or smile going on. So there's the crabby part, but then there's also kind of that (laughs) fake voice, laugh, or smile. And notice that. And then again, drop into your heart and your gut to what you are actually feeling and experiencing. And when, you, when you're with somebody that you completely trust, who really wants the best for you, being able to download what you're actually experiencing in those situations, and, and, uh, and where in your life are you pretending the most? Like, where are you doing that fake smile? With who? And with what situations? Is it in the domain of your intimate relationships? Is it with family members? Is it with colleagues? Is it with your boss? Is it, are you the boss and then it's with your employees? It's kind of like noticing that you've been wearing a bad fitting coat or pair of slacks that just don't work on your body. They just, oh, they just make you uncomfortable and irritable or like covering up with that, having to cover up with that fake smile. Some clothes just don't fit your body at all or your personality. And the last one, give yourself permission to, as Mary Oliver states it, Let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. You know, it's so interesting. I think a lot of us get trained in that we must suffer and that we must struggle. And yes, some of life is difficult and some things are challenging to learn. But when you're really passionate about the topic uh, it just you're you're willing to surmount the obstacles and to keep going. So begin to notice what you really love. Write it down. For some people, what you don't like can point you to what you do like. So maybe you got to start with all the things that you don't like about your life right now, and and use that as a springboard to what you do like because it may be a mystery to you. Maybe other people have wanted you to be a lawyer, but you just want to bake cakes and open up a cake shop. So can you begin to string together all the happy moments from when you were little and doing that activity that the soft animal of your body loved what it loved? Get in touch with that. What is it that you love to do more than anything? Write it down and see what actions you can take today to carve out 10 minutes, even 10 minutes to do what you love. That That's all the tips. So a lot of noticing, right? And connecting with your heart and connecting with what you actually love to do. Uh, a lot of these will help bring an end to that pretending. Next time, we'll discuss the courage at the core, how being brave remains at the heart of belonging to yourself, with a brief story and tips to support your healing transformations and the experience of being alive. 
You've been listening to Transformation Matters with your host, Laura Staley, founder of Cherish Your World and author of Live Inspired. I passionately guide people to heal, transform, and thrive. You are loved more than you can even imagine. You matter to our world. Till next time.